Peace of the Lord be with you. And this is our devotion for <clears throat> uh, Tuesday, May 12th. And uh, the reading for today is from Second, excuse me, First Timothy chapter two, and we'll read verses one through six. And you should have this in the morning, or at least access to it in the morning. We will follow the uh, morning order of daily prayer on uh, on page two ninety five of the hymnal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading. Beginning at verse 1, First Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, it is good that we pray. You uh, call us to do so. You promise to hear us. We give you thanks that as you have created all things, created the whole universe, that you would desire to hear each and every one of us pray to you, that our words would be a joy to ring in your ears and we thank you for the assurance of your love for us in your son Jesus we pray that as we uh, go about this work of prayer the work that you you call us to this work that is a reflection of our faith that uh, you would guide us in that work we thank you for your Holy Spirit who who gives us the words by which we pray who intercedes on our behalf with groanings when we don't even know what to pray. As we come to your word this morning, we pray that you would be with us, that you would bless us in that prayer, uh, that you would grant us your Holy Spirit, uh, that you would grant me your spirit as I teach, your wisdom, and that you would grant us all that spirit, that he would open our ears to hear and our hearts to understand, as you live and reign, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Well, as we have our, uh, our, our reading this morning, uh, one of the things that I, I often like to make the point of when we have what are called the pastoral epistles, when we have um, Paul's, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, Paul's, Paul's writings to uh, 1 and 2 Timothy and, and uh, also to Titus, um, the reminder that these are just what we call them, pastoral epistles. These are, are Paul as a pastor writing to Timothy or to Titus as a pastor. Uh, so this is Pastor Paul writing to Pastor Timothy. And uh, as we think of that that context, right, uh, for, for, for this passage, uh, how can we apply that? Well, something that I think is a very reasonable uh, conclusion that we can draw from that is, is that when Paul is telling Timothy... When he says, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. Uh, first of all, we see this, this, first of all, we see that this, first of all, is, is a charge from Pastor Paul to Pastor Timothy. Uh, that's his first charge, even, in this first letter that he makes to him. So there's his first charge to prayer, but, but I think it's reasonable to, to say that, that as, we, as we see Paul saying this, that it's not just telling Timothy to, he's not just telling Timothy to pray privately, he's making the point that Timothy is to draw the congregation all together to prayer, right? As they gather as the body of Christ corporately, then Timothy is to lead them in that prayer corporately, right? You know, and then I make this point because in, in uh, 
many uh, iterations, I guess you could say, in, in American Christianity, we sort of have this idea that my faith is just about Jesus and me, my prayer is just about Jesus and me, uh, and, and what that comes from is, is um, well-intentioned uh, understanding that, that when we when we pray, uh, that, that our hearts should be uh, involved in that. You know, that, that prayer isn't something that we just go about mindlessly. Um, and, and, that, and that's 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 true. You know, when, when we when we are joined together in corporate worship, we want to be engaged in that. If we are not engaged in that, there there's a problem there. And that, that so that's absolutely true. But that doesn't mean that corporate worship is worthless, right? And then so Paul is calling Timothy then to gather the people together. And what is he calling them to do? Well, one of the things he's calling them to do is pray. With that in mind, then, let's look at how he says that. He says, Well, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made to all people. Supplications. Uh, I looked that up in, in, in Merriam-Webster just to kind of get an idea of, of a way to explain that. You know, we think of supplications in, in terms of asking for things. Uh, and it, it says that. It says to ask humbly or earnestly. And in particular, speaks of, of prayer in that definition. But coming before God humbly asking for things, um, you know, which as we think about that is pretty amazing, that the God, as I said in, in our prayer, the God who created the whole universe would call us to ask him for things. You know, you hear so often people saying, well, I, I'm not going to pray about that because I don't want to bother God with it. God's got way more important things to do. Well, you know what? He does. He does have more important things to do. But yet he still wants us to ask for those things. When we are asking for these minute things, we're showing that we trust Him in every detail of our life. We trust that He cares about every detail of our life. In the Psalms, it tells us that even the, the numbers of the, the hairs on our heads, excuse me, even the, the, the hairs on our heads are numbered. Right? That God knows the number of those hairs. And He cares enough that He would ask us, He would call us to ask Him for these things, these supplications, humbly and earnestly. Uh, and then, and then uh, you know, supplications, prayers, addressing God by speaking to Him. You know, we uh, we can think of, of prayers in terms of what we have in Scripture. Uh, we can think of prayers how, uh, you know, we, we come to, to praying the words of Scripture, which are a huge blessing. I, I'm, I'm often telling people that, you know, we should be praying the words of Scripture. The, what, what better thing to pray than the words that God Himself has given us? Um, so prayers, but also just speaking to Him. Uh, out of out of our own thoughts and and uh, concerns, and uh, out of our own hearts, um, intercessions. That's specifically asking for things on behalf of other people, interceding on behalf of other people. We're going to see, uh, especially tomorrow with with Moses. There's this intercession that Moses does that reflects Jesus, and and and, and as we think about that, um, we think about. Uh, well, we can talk about Jesus as, as our priest, our great high priest. Uh, we think about what a priest did, uh, in particular what priests did in the Old Testament temple. Uh, one of the things that they did is they interceded on behalf of the people. Uh, if you look in that, there's a, a description of how the, the high priest would have a, a, a breastplate. Uh, and on his breastplate, he, which he would wear as he would come before the altar of God in the, in the temple, before he come to the Ark of the Covenant, right? He come before that ark, and he would have a stone for each of the twelve tribes. And what he's doing, the high priest was doing, was bringing the tribes to God's remembrance as he came before God's presence, before his throne. Uh, Jesus does that for us. He intercedes for us. Um, and as we are in Christ, we intercede for others. And in fact, in, in, in um, 1 Peter 2.9, it speaks of us as being uh, a holy priesthood. It says that uh, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's one of the things we have to understand that as we are priests before God, you know, we, we, uh, we don't understand having a, a priesthood in the same sense as in the Old Testament. Um, but as we are priests before God, all of us, not just pastors, but all of us, we intercede before God on behalf of the world. Now, as I, as I make that distinction, that's to be clear that not all Christians are pastors. Pastors are called to, uh, to a unique vocation, uh, a holy vocation, but 
many vocations can be holy. That's not the only holy vocation. You can't only serve God by being a pastor. Um, but but uh, it is a vocation. It doesn't make me holier. I'm not a holier person. My prayers aren't heard more than your prayers. Uh, we are we are heard by faith. Um, but I am, as a pastor, called to pre preach the word to God's people, to proclaim his absolution, to, to uh, administrate the sacraments, you know. But we are all, as Christians, called to intercede on behalf of the world, to bring the whole world, those who don't believe, before God in prayer, to intercede. Right? Intercession. And then thanksgivings. Uh, you know, that's one that's understood. I mean, it's easy to understand when we pray in thanksgivings, but it's easy, easy also to forget that... Um, that we are to give thanks to God in our prayers. So, you know. so and and, and uh, we go on then. For whom are we to pray? Who, for whom are we to uh, have supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings? For kings and all who are in high positions. You know, for all. Oh, excuse me. For all people first, right? Thanksgivings be made for all people. So everyone, we're supposed to pray for all which includes even our enemies. That can be hard to do, right? But then, for kings and for all who are in high positions, uh, I think that's something that could be not so popular at our time. I know I've had members that, that uh, have told me that they really didn't want us praying for the blessings uh, upon those in our government because they are so uh, abusive of their, of their authority and their powers. And that's often true. Um, but one of the things that we do is we pray for them in that. Uh, we pray that they would not rule and govern in that way. They would rule and govern with the best interest of people uh, at, at their hearts. That they would they would go about their work in, in view of the service that it truly is. But we still pray for them and pray for blessings upon them. Uh, in, in addition to that, you know, we think about the tensions that we have in our, our political landscape in, in, uh, in the quarantine that we're in now, I like to call it the corona team, right? You know, that we have so many different perspectives on, on what what is best in this time. Uh, and tension in that and, and desires then that, that perhaps bad things would happen to the rulers that are, are uh, going about, uh, going about that, that work in a way that we're not pleased with. We're still called to pray for them. We're also called to pray for them even despite uh, the undercurrents in our time where we despise anyone that we perceive as having more more power than us, right? Uh, or more, more than us in general, but especially more power than us, right? We are still called to pray for them. Why? That we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. We may lead a peaceful life. We may be allowed to for example, practice our faith in particular in a way that's peaceful, that we would not have that disturbed, uh, quiet life, godly and dignified. Um, that we can go about our daily vocations, the things to which God calls us, in, in a way that's peaceful. Um, and, and this is good, and it's pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So there's this connection there between praying for this peaceful life and, and this aspect where in the midst of that peaceful life, people would be saved. That the work of the church would be free, that we would be able to go about proclaiming that gospel, proclaiming the excellencies, as, uh, as it said in First Peter there, the excellencies of the one who has saved us, that people would know about the salvation that is ours in Christ. And, uh, and then we get this, this how, how so, how is this pleasing um, for their... Uh, desires all to be saved, God, God desiring salvation, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. God desires all to be saved. You know, we sadly see um, in, in Scripture that not all are saved. We understand this to be out of a, a willful resistance to, to God and to his calling to them. Uh, it doesn't mean that we who, who believe are, are any better. We can't look down upon those who don't believe because we willfully resisted less, or less willfully resisted. Uh, we, we know that we are always saved by God's grace, uh, grace alone, through faith alone. But, uh, you know, so there's that aspect where God is responsible for our salvation, but, uh, but the man is responsible for his own condemnation. How does that work? We don't know. It's, it's a tension, uh, but it's a, a tension that's scriptural. But, uh, but we see in the midst of this, this connection to prayer and that salvation. This connection to prayer and the one who mediates between us and God. The man Christ Jesus. The one who 
earned the ability for us to come before God by his ransom for all. Grounding our prayer then in that mediation of Christ, that promise, as I said in yesterday's devotion, that love that God has for us in him, and that, uh, that promise of salvation in him, that promise that he hears us because of Christ. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are in need. We intercede on their behalf. We ask you to hear them, to be with them, to bless them, uh, most of all, with the peace that only you can give, the peace which transcends all human understanding. We pray for all of those who are in need of your care, those who are in sickness and trial, that you would restore them to health and peace according to your good and gracious will, and that if it not be your will to restore them at this time, that you would grant them strength and peace as only you can give it by your Holy Spirit. Through your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with that same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.